There are two main approaches to uh, personality assessment. They really have quite different implications. So the first one um, argues that personality assessment should focus on measuring or assessing traits. It sort of takes us all the way back to the issue of reputation. Uh, I prefer to think of traits as just the descriptive terms that are used in, in reports when you're providing somebody with information about personality. Uh, I'm not truly measuring traits, those are just labels. So the trait approach to personality is not very useful in order to um, predict and understand what people will be doing. The second approach focuses on validity or predicting outcomes. And this is the most useful approach to personality assessment and is the one that has been used most successfully in organizations. So I think if you're really going to get down to the brass tacks of what makes personality data useful, it's when we moved away from, gee, I'm gonna tell you about all these traits about yourself, and we started to tell people, here's how you're gonna be perceived in the workplace based on this descriptive, this reputational snapshot. That's what really was the turning point. So one of the things that I think really comes out of, uh, uh, one of the powerful things that comes out of personality it helps you to understand yourself and it helps you control yourself. But the trouble is many leaders don't have any incentives to control themselves. There's nobody is going to tell them the truth. There's nobody going to warn them. There's nobody going to restrain them. Nobody has the guts to stand up to them. And they believe they're being authentic. You know, this word authentic, they kind of latch onto this and say, I'm an authentic leader, you know, follow me or go to hell sort of thing. But you may be following them to hell as well. So, so leaders crash and burn by being too much themselves often, by not really understanding when they have to turn down the volume or when they have to change change their behavior to, to meet, uh, meet changing circumstances. What I know is, is the enormous power of an individual leader to cause doom and destruction. That, you know, one person can lead a whole organization, a whole organization of many, many people into, into chaos. One individual can do this. Never underestimate the power of a really bad leader to cock things up. In the summer of 1996, Albert Dunlap, better known as Chainsaw Al, became the chairman and CEO of Sunbeam Products. Dunlap was known in the corporate world as a downsizing specialist. Almost immediately, Dunlap cut more than 6,000 jobs at Sunbeam, closing more than half a dozen plants and factories across the United States. However, no community was hit harder than Cushada, Louisiana. In a town of 2000, the closure of the Sunbeam factory took with it more than 500 jobs. The town was devastated. Two years later, the SEC opened an investigation into Dunlap and his questionable accounting practices. The Sunbeam Board of Directors had no choice but to fire him, less than two years after bringing him in to save the company. People are the most dangerous, consequential forces on Earth. Wouldn't it be sensible to know something about people? 